Well, I'd like to show you how I've built the Chowning FM instrument and specifically we'll be implementing the clarinet instrument. Let me begin by first placing all of my front panel controls and I'll begin with uh, more of the system variables like the duration of the waveform and the sampling frequency. And let me just save some time here and get the rest of the front panel controls that we need for the instrument laid out as well. I'll begin by calculating the total number of samples that we need. So I multiply duration times the sampling frequency and that gives me samples. Let me convert that to an integer format since uh, that's what all of the other nodes are expecting or sub VIs are expecting that deal with number of samples. Next I will use the ramp generator to create my time basis. So this will take the total number of samples and then I can specify the start and stop times that I need. Well my start time will just default to zero and my end time is the duration in seconds. Again, the default is zero. It's not completely evident. Let me just go ahead and create a constant there so that becomes more clear. Now, I will begin by considering the overall FM equation that we need. And this is the version that has the time varying, uh, time varying amplitude envelope as well as the time varying modulation index. I need to multiply a number of things together here, so I'll use the compound operator. So I have my time basis, and you can also see that that is a little bit thicker orange wire, so that's telling us that it's a vector. We need the carrier frequency, and I also need to convert that to radians per second by multiplying by 2 pi. And so that matches the 2 pi FCT that we have in our equation. Alright, let me then calculate the modulation frequency by multiplying the harmonicity ratio by the carrier frequency. And uh, again the uh, harmonicity ratio H is defined as FM divided by M uh, divided by FC. So we take the product of those two to get the modulation frequency. Next I will work on a technique using the one-dimensional interpolation to create the time varying uh, functions A of T and I of T. And one-dimensional interpolation requires that we set some control points and we need to do this as uh, time value pairs. So I'm creating two array constants for this purpose. So I have one for the time and the other, um, I'm just calling this the generic waveform right now, W1 of T, and that'll get scaled later on to make things like the amplitude. So under the mathematics palette and then interpolation we can find our 1D interpolator. So the Y is the independent variable and the X input is the excuse me, y is the dependent variable and the x input is the independent variable, so that would be time. So at time zero, I want my waveform 
w1 to have the value minus 40. And I'll be specifying my values in terms of decibels. And this will be specifically implementing the envelope that we need for the Chowning clarinet. So I'll have that start at minus 40, which is essentially silence. And then at time 0 0.2, it will reach full volume, or 0 dB. At 0 0.8, take it back down to, or keep it at 0, excuse me. And then at 1, send that back down to minus 40. So the total duration here is normalized over the time interval 0 to 1. And then we can stretch that out to our actual duration as needed later on. Now in order for the interpolation to work it needs to have a range of values over which to carry out the interpolation. So what I'm doing now is taking my time vector which runs from 0 to duration. I'm dividing that now by duration so that way I have a vector that runs between 0 and 1. So that's my normalized time that matches what I have for my array constant for time. Let's just see how we're doing so far. Okay, good. We see that the time actually now runs between 0 and 6. If we looked at the waveform graph. Let me try to shape this a little bit differently. And actually it looks like it'd be a lot better if we set the duration to be something other than zero. So let me go ahead and adjust my sampling frequency and my duration. That makes a lot more sense now. Before I was only actually generating six samples apparently. So let me get these back to my original values. Okay, good. So again, the waveform plot is showing time running from 0 to 1,000, but you have to remember that those are just actually, uh, actually telling us the sample number that we're looking at. So I'll use that waveform graph later on. That's why I'm not deleting that quite yet. Now what I've specified in, for my amplitude is something that would be the uh, variation of intensity over time. To convert that into actual amplitude, I need to undo the decibels equation. So I do that by dividing by 20 and then using that argument uh, for the 10 to the x function. And this looks pretty good. We have values running between 0 and 1 for amplitude. Now just to try to avoid some crossover wires, let me move this down. Actually I'm going to go ahead and copy this to make my second waveform W2 of T because the clarinet has two different um, waveforms that we need, one for the modulation index and one for the amplitude. So I have amplitude on top right now and I've adjusted the values for W2 so it corresponds to the modulation index that we need. So the modulation index is going to make the sound rather bright during the onset transient and then it will reduce the uh, brightness of the sound for the duration of the note. Okay, now I've moved my waveform generators down to the bottom, as I say, to try to avoid some crossover wires. When I multiply my first waveform, W1, by the amplitude, that gives me my time-varying amplitude, A of T. All right, so let me return back to the creation of the second part of our FM equation, and this is the one involving the modulation frequency. I will also modify the free label 
So we can clearly see that that's associated with our modulation frequency term. All right, the front panel controls indicate the max and min valves for the modulation index. So I'll take the difference of those two to give me my total range for modulation index. And then I scale my second waveform, W2 of T, according to that difference. And then I add the minimum modulation index, and that gives me my floor. So that way I now have the ability to say what's the, the maximum and minimum values and the waveform W2 simply needs to vary between 0 and 1 to make that work properly. All right, now that I have my modulation index varying as a function of time, I can multiply that by the sinusoidal term. And if you're uh, if you've been following all this, you can see that we kind of need to get a sinusoid involved, but actually what I've constructed right now is i of t times 2 pi fm of t. What I really needed to do was first multiply, or excuse me, first um, compute the sine of 2 pi fm of t, and then multiply those two. So let me make that correction now. Okay, we're getting close. We can add these two expressions. That's a control shift. If you if you haven't been able to see that so far, control shift is a quick way of doing a copy of an existing element on the block diagram. All right, there's my sign of the entire large argument there. And let's see how we're doing. Before uh, ultimately applying this to something like the sound card output, or in this case I want to use the triple display, and I'd like to have my time axis calibrated, I'll go ahead and convert my array of samples into a, the waveform data type. So I need to calculate the sampling interval dt. That's the reciprocal of sampling frequency. And of course, connecting my array of samples to the other input of build waveform finishes the job. And need a little bit more room here. Let me. I'll place that on the or place the indicator on the block diagram. I'll change its type to a front panel control. Uh, notice that I haven't done anything with my amplitude yet. So I need to break this connection. All right, now I've got the whole uh, large sine function multiplied by the time varying amplitude. All right, so I'll give this a value just a little bit less than one. I'll call that 0.9, say a duration of a half second. Now, according to the definition of the Chowning clarinet instrument, I need a carrier frequency of 900 hertz harmonicity ratio of 0.667, Imax is 4, and Imin is 2. Now that I'm kind of done creating those or, uh, sort of internal waveforms, let me move my waveform plots and relabel those so I actually can display my time varying amplitude and time varying modulation index. All right, so that looks kind of interesting in the uh, time domain. 
Looks like all the values are working out properly. Let's take a listen. Take a look at the spectrum again. All right, that sounds somewhat clarinet-like. You can also try adjusting the other parameters a bit just to see what kind of different variations you can get. That to me doesn't sound quite as realistic, just a little bit too high. Now for longer durations, the way I've set up the envelope generator, that tends to kind of exaggerate, uh, perhaps exaggerates the transient startup a, a little bit, but... I can also try experimenting with the uh, way in which we allow the modulation index to vary. So in this case, I'm seeing a fairly um, bright, transient, but then a fairly narrow band, steady state part. Point 0.707 is the reciprocal of square root of 2, so that's an irrational number. And then we get the somewhat unusual spacing of harmonics. ratio showing up there, 1 over 2. All right, so those are just some, some ideas to try. Let's try one more. Maybe that's like a really, really deep bassoon at that point. All right, there you have it. That's my implementation of the Chowning FM clarinet.